overnight they've now I'm now able to pick them up they're what we call leather hard which really describes the feel of them they're, they feel like a sort of stiff leather uh, texture um, if you try and make do the next step when the clay is too soft obviously it's going to be very difficult to hold it's going to dent with your fingers if you try and do it when it's too hard when you try and put on the handles the handles will go on um, but because this clay is much drier than the handle you've just put on as they dry the handle will crack and pull away so it's all about timing to, to make a successful pot now the next step we're going to do is is a stage really that a lot of potters don't bother with especially with tableware um, which is the turning process I like to see a, uh, a smooth base um, so I'm going to invert them and, and turn them, a bit like a wood turner. A lot of potters don't bother with that, they just literally smooth it off and leave it as it is. Um, it's just what I prefer to do. Um, so the next stage is to put this pot back onto the wheel. Um, we do this just by wetting the rim a little bit. It's a bit of a fiddly process, because it does tend to come off sometimes, so you have to bear with me a bit. And then we have to make sure that it's back in the centre again more or less. You don't have to be too precise, but it does help to be as close as you can without spending too long. And that's about right. And then we, I use a tool like this. Um, there are different methods of turning, um, but I like this open loop. It seems to clear the, the waste material quicker uh, than anything else we use. <coughs> and basically I'm just going to trim off the base and make it nice and even and smooth and hopefully a, li a little bit more finished. <coughs> so I just gently go into the side like that. And then I give it a little skim on the outside to take away any lumps and bumps. Obviously you could if you wanted to spend a lot more time on this and really pare it down and make it thinner and thinner and finer and finer <coughs> but it's not uh, really an economic thing to do you should be able to throw them reasonably thin to start with so that the turning process is just a minimalist operation to finish off the job and then I just countersink this got a nice neat finish to it uh, which I prefer it's just a, a personal thing okay well the next stage is my least favorite I have to say which is to put a handle on the mugs there are various ways of doing this um, one is to extrude them which is really sort of to put them through uh, almost like a sausage machine with a with a little profile that it squeezes through so you get an, an equal sort of uh, length of clay which you cut off at, at equal lengths. Uh, I don't have a machine like that um, so I'm going to show you the traditional way um, which is fiddly uh, which, is, which is why it's not my favourite job um, and a lot of people, a lot of potters do find it um, quite a difficult thing to do. So this is going to be a traditional strap handle uh, we call it. Um, in order to do that we do need to prepare the clay properly again. If you remember we wedged the clay or kneaded the clay for the throwing uh, to make it even and smooth and for the same reason we're going to do it again now. So I'll just do a little bit of preparation again, a little bit of kneading, a small amount of clay because I'm just going to pull handles from this. 
Now we've prepared the clay, uh, I'm going to pull the handles and this would be in two stages. So the first stage I'm just going to make a rough sort of sausage shape. Um, so we use a bit of water, we get it into sort of roughly a cone shape like that and we just work the clay down like so to make it roughly into a small tubular shape like that and then I cut it off at that sort of length I don't want it too long don't need too much clay for this and the same again and if I had 20 mugs to do what I would do is prepare 20 of these so now the handles are ready to apply to the mugs uh, in order to do this you really need what we call slip or slurry which is basically just the same clay but watered down to sort of a, a soft consistency like this not too watery and not too hard obviously again you want it to bind to the pot effectively you want the handle or whatever you join to the clay uh, to dry at the same pace together um, and that's the ideal combination if you don't if they dry unevenly they're going to crack later on when they when they're either fired or before that when they're dry so we need a good join so i just use a knife here and score where i'm going to put the handle so it's really going to bind into the clay just a little bit at the bottom where it's going to touch hopefully then you take one of these and just get a, a dollop of slip onto it it's better to have too much than too little <clears throat> so it sort of spreads out around the pot you press, press it on obviously you don't press too hard otherwise it's going to go straight through the side of the pot and then I just pinch it round round the edges to make sure it has a good join all the way round like that and once you've got to that stage again you wet your hands like a lubricant and you pull the handle like, like so using the thumb to flatten it to give it that strap shape so the profile is thinner on that side and flatter on this side and you use the thumb to create this groove in the middle once you're happy with that you bend it round and attach it hopefully to the back of the pot like so just do a little adjustment there give it a bit more shape so you get this like an almost like an ear shape there now we get to the the final stage of the manufacturing side of making a mug and in this case I need to use what we call a sprig mold which is one I made earlier if you like so I'd have made the original of this and then cast it in plaster of Paris so it's absorbent and in this particular case it happens to be the Oaksy school levers mugs so it's got their little logo on there and year six levers um, <clears throat> so it could be any design you want uh, but this is the nearest I get to sort of a, a manufacturing side of, uh, of ceramics um, so I can press each one of these and each one is exactly the same in order to do that again we prepared the clay earlier so again it's smooth hasn't got holes in it just use a small amount of clay roll it up and then basically just press it in hence press mold make sure it's all even a nice firm pressure in there and hopefully just wire it through take off the excess 
and then just using another little piece of clay just to pull it out of the mould just lift it one corner and out it comes and hopefully that's what we're going to apply to the mugs in this case it could be applied to a bowl or a plate um, that's the advantage of using this method and now we come to the last piece of the jigsaw if you like and that's just applying the the sprig or the logo to the mug in this case <clears throat> and you can see why I've made the shape of the mug this this way because it fits this particular logo very well um, the first thing we need to do is once again to score the area that's going to be joined it's really important we get a good join here because logos are notorious or sprigs notoriously lift in the edges or you'll get a very fine crack around them so it's very important that we apply a lot of slip to really get a good join again it's better to have too much it makes a bit of a mess than too little because you could actually join this just using water it will join but again as it dries out it will just crack away from the pot it does need the clay content to mix the two you just place it on there like that and gradually work it out from the middle make sure it's in the right place and work it out to the edges all the way around make sure there's no air pocket underneath And that's just about it. All it leaves then for me to do is to put my little mark on the on the handle, which I usually use this little stamp here with my initials on it. And that's it as far as the manufacturing goes. The next step will obviously be firing it in the kiln once, then it'll come out of the kiln and then I'll glaze it and it goes back in for its second firing and final firing and uh, hopefully then you've got 11 mugs all pretty much the same.